the power of vulnerability. What a concept. Yes, that's exactly what I intend to talk about this morning. As I said yesterday, I've been in a workshop this weekend. I'm still in the workshop. Um, I'll be going back today for the conclusion. And one of the things that has always amazed me about these workshops is how powerful people are when they are willing to tell the truth. So many times in our world, so many people in our world, we're afraid to tell the truth. Politicians can't tell us the truth. Of course, that's because they have something to hide. But the average person seems to follow suit with this idea that if I tell people what's really going on, how I really feel, what I really think, what has really happened to me, that somehow they're not going to accept me, somehow that's going to show me in a, in a light as being somehow weak and less than what I want to be. And so we wear masks, we put on a facade, we develop personas that make us feel acceptable. The problem is they're not real. They're not authentic. It's not really us that we are portraying. And because it's not us, because we are trying to portray only strength and not weakness, we actually portray weakness. We portray the exact opposite of what we think we are portraying. We deceive our own selves, in other words. As I said, it is amazing to me how powerful and how lovable and how wise people appear and actually are when they step into that place where they say, I don't care what you think about me anymore. Whatever your opinion is doesn't matter. This is what I've experienced. This is what I feel. This is who I am. When we do that, something dramatically happens. For one thing, we give up on the idea that there's some place safe to hide. There is no place to hide from the truth. There never was. It's always been an illusion that we've convinced ourselves somehow if I just keep this part of me silenced and hidden, somehow everything's going to be all right. But as we look at the world around us, obviously everything's not all right. As I said, politicians, they never tell us the truth. Of course, they play a double game, a dual game, where they pretend to be serving people. But in actuality, they're not serving people. They're serving moneyed interests interests of people that want to rule the world and control all the issues that happen in the world, all the politics, if you will. But we're watching in this day and age, we're watching that facade fall. We're watching this game <laughs> being exposed for what it is. It's the grand lie. It's the grand lie. And as we watch this, we have a choice. What are we going to do with the collapse of our culture based on lies? What are we going to do with that collapse? I'm inviting you and everyone that listens to this to make the choice to stand in your personal power and to reach that place in your life where you're willing to be vulnerable. I'm telling you relationships die because of the unwillingness of one party or the other, or both, to be vulnerable in the relationship, so that there is no intimacy. All that you ever are willing to show to the other person is an image that you think is acceptable, but you're never really willing to tell the truth and to be authentic in the relationship. There can be no intimacy without authenticity. It is an absolutely prerequisite. 
and there can be no genuine power without authenticity. What you've experienced, what you feel, what you think, these are your expressions and to express them truly is the only way out of the dilemma of feeling not good enough, of feeling weak, of feeling like you're a victim. It's the only way out is to tell the truth. The only way out. That's why Jesus and, and other great teachers throughout the ages have said, the truth shall set you free. It really does. But somehow it's hard for us to accept that even the worst truths, when told, set us free. I mean, over the, the scores of workshops that I have been involved in, I have seen literally hundreds and hundreds of people that have been abused in one way or another, sometimes horrific abuse, by family members, uh, both physical abuse, sexual abuse, but it's all spiritual and emotional abuse. All of it is that. All of it is that. Religions are abusive when they teach you that if you're this way, you're not acceptable. You can't be loved if you're this or that. I'm telling you, that is total BS. It's baloney. God is unconditionally loving. And, and I know unconditional love if we knew the understood what love really was, the word, having to put the word unconditional in front of it is almost a redundancy. However, because we have misapplied what love is, sometimes love is nothing but fear masquerading as love, like, I need you, I can't live without you. Well, that's not true. That's simply not a truth. That's fear saying, I'd be lost, I'd die if you weren't in my life, if you weren't in my world. Well, that's simply, I mean, I mean, that may be your belief, but it's not a truth. You only need air and food and water and shelter and touch, especially when you're a little one. A baby will die without touch. That's the truth. That's the truth. But you don't need any particular person. Do you need people? Yes, you do. Do you want to have people in your life? All of us, all of us are crying for love. But I'm telling you the way that we've gone about getting that love is often by wearing masks. The Greek word for wearing masks is hypocrite. Or the word hypocrite, hypokrites, or however you say it in Greek, I'm not really even sure. But that's, the, that's where we get the word hypocrite from. It's one who wears masks because they're unwilling to be real. They think they're playing it safe, but they're actually playing a very dangerous game. I've played it. You've played it. I don't know anybody on this planet that hasn't played it at one time or another because that's the culture that we live in. We think that we have to pretend we're something that we're not in order to be loved and accepted. I'm inviting you to risk being vulnerable with people that are safe. Not everybody is safe. Trust your gut on that one. Trust your heart. You'll know. Your body will tell you who is safe and who isn't in any given moment. Watch for your gut to tighten up if something is not safe for you, if something is not good for you. But be willing, be willing to be real and to find people in your life that you can tell the truth to because truly the truth will set you free and empower you to live a totally different life. And as we become empowered human beings, we will change the world. And I believe that will happen, as I've been saying, in 2011. That's going to be all for now. Until tomorrow, God bless you and namaste.